I've got a question for you guys. Why don't people make personal websites anymore? Like, look, let's be honest. The job market is tough. There's a lot of competition. You need a way to stand out. I work in the field of cybersecurity and I knew I needed a way to stand out. And so I learned how to make a website and a very cheap website. Actually, it, it's like almost free. I want to show you guys how I did that. This is my personal website. It's pretty simple. Let's be honest. It's just a quick 30 second blurb about me. And I only had to pay for the domain name. I'm not paying to host it or anything, it's being hosted for free. And the way we're doing that is through Azure Static Web Apps. This is probably old news for some of you guys. You might have not heard of it, but we are using Azure Static Web Apps because they have a free hosting plan. And why not take advantage of that? Anyone can do it. So guys, stick around. You guys will learn a lot and hopefully you will have your own personal website by the end of this video. Welcome to Home Lab, the channel where we make home labbing simple and cost effective. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, if you haven't already, go ahead and purchase a domain name. Uh, because we're going for the most cost effective route, I'm actually going to use a website called domcomp.com, which will compare the prices of domain names across various different websites. So as you can see here, we got Namecheap and then Pork Bun and Pork Bun actually ended up being the most cost effective route for me. And you can see that here with Namecheap being about $8 a year and pork bun being about $7. Now you do also want to compare the special deals they have. So for two years, we have about $17 and $20 on Namecheap. So I did end up choosing pork bun. Next thing we want to do here is create a GitHub account. We're using GitHub to continuously integrate and deploy our website. And soon you'll get to see what that actually looks like. We'll go ahead and create a new repo, name it whatever you want and make sure it is private. Now, once you've created your repository, you should be met with this screen with a couple of options. What we'll want to click here is create a new file. Now we'll name our file index.html. This is essentially the homepage for our website. If you know anything about web servers, you know that this is pretty much home base. So what do we put in our index.html file? If you're familiar with HTML, you can go ahead and put whatever you want there. If this is your first time working with HTML and creating a website, I have put a link in the description to my own GitHub repo that can serve as a template for your index.html. So feel free to use that. So I'll go ahead and use that exact same template I was just talking about in my example right here. Once you hit commit changes, you should see your GitHub repository with an index.html file. We're doing this through GitHub because Azure has a feature to integrate with GitHub for continuous integration and deployment. And again, you'll see what that looks like later in the video. So by now you should have your GitHub repo and your domain name. What you want to do now is create an Azure account. There's no cost to making an Azure account. The only cost there is, is if you use a paid service. But of course, as you can see with this screenshot, we are using a free service and Azure offers many free services. So it's great. Also, it's worth noting if you're a student, you do get a lot more benefits. So I'll definitely leave some material about that in the description. Now, once you're logged into your Azure account, you should be on the home page. What we first want to do is create a resource group. Think of a resource group as a folder or a container that will essentially hold all your resources related to the project you're working on. So we're just going to create a new resource group. I'm going to name the resource group home Labbed. And for the region, be sure to select the region that suits you best. And that right there is our resource group. From here, we can just go ahead and create our static web app. At the search bar at the top, we can just search up static web app, and it's going to be the first option there. We're going to hit create, and under resource group, we're going to select the resource group we just created. For the static web app, I'm also going to name it home lab. And for the plan type, be sure to hit free, unless you want to be charged money. Now, under deployment details, you can see that I have GitHub selected. Now, remember when we created that GitHub repo earlier? Right, so we're basically going to integrate GitHub into our static web app. This will make a lot more sense further down the video, but once you've logged in, be sure to select your organization, which should just be your username and your repository, which you created earlier and the branch of your repository. I only have the main branch. If you have another one you want to use, go for it. All right. So what we'll do now is hit review and create, and we should be met with this screen telling us that our deployment is complete. Now from here, we can go directly to the static web app by hitting go to resource. This right here is where we'll be managing our static web app. Now on the static web app resource, you'll notice a couple of important things. First of all, our deployment source. As you can see, our source is pointing to our repository. 
on GitHub. This is the same repository we made in the beginning of the video, and it's essentially holding all the necessary files that make up our website. Within the repo, you'll also find a new folder called workflows. This folder was actually created after you linked your repository to the static web app. And you don't need to know exactly how it works, but essentially there's a file in there, a workflow file that allows us to automate the deployment process from Visual Studio Code, for example, onto our website. So this is what allows for continuous integration and deployment. And I'll show you guys what that looks like. So just stick with me. Now you'll also notice that there's a URL that has been automatically generated by Azure. Upon clicking it, you can see it is loading the exact same index.html file that is on our GitHub repository. If we wanted to, we could use the Azure provided URL, but it doesn't look so nice. So we are going to go link our domain name to our Azure static web page. So we're back on the Azure static web app resource. And on the left hand side, you should see something called custom domain. So click that. And over at the top, you should see an option to add and select custom domain on other DNS. Now here we're going to add our domain name that we earlier purchased. So I'm just going to put homelab.com. And on the next screen, it's going to ask us to validate our domain ownership. Now validating our domain ownership is actually pretty simple. We're just going to hit generate code here. We're going to copy that and head over to Porkbun, which is where we purchased our domain. We are on the domain management page of Porkbun. And wherever you registered your domain, there should also be a domain management section. So head over there and then under our domain, we are going to edit the DNS record. For our first DNS record, we are going to leave the type as TXT because again, we are just verifying that we have ownership of the domain. Under host, we are going to leave this blank because we want this record to be for the root domain. Under answer, we're going to take what we copied from Azure and paste it right here. And I would also go ahead and delete these default records made by wherever you registered your domain. After some minutes, you should see a green check mark, which indicates that you are the domain owner. So far, all we've done is validate that we're the domain owners, but we do need to direct traffic to the site. On the right hand side, you should see add a C name alias or a record. So we're going to click that. Now it'll ask us to select a record type. Now I've selected alias record because I want our domain homelab.com to point directly to the Azure provided host name, which is that value right there. You could also use an A record, but A records will map our domain name directly to the provided Azure IPv4 address. And I didn't go with that because that address might change, although I'm not entirely 100% sure. So I just took the safe route and chose alias. All right, now we can head over to pork bun and add a new DNS record for the type. We're going to put alias under host. We're going to put at, which is the root of the domain. And under answer, we're going to paste the value we had just copied. We can click add. Now, if we just type homelab.com into the search bar and there you go, looks like it worked. All right, so we're almost done here, but we do want a way to push updates and make changes to our website. So how do we do that? The easiest way would be through Visual Studio Code. Go ahead and install Visual Studio Code. After opening it, you should see the welcome page. On the welcome page, there should be a button to clone Git repository. We're going to click that. If this is your first time using Visual Studio Code, you'll probably get a message saying something like GitHub wants to sign in using GitHub and just hit allow. Then you should see a drop down of all your repos. I will go ahead and select the one I created earlier. The last thing here is to select the folder that you would like to clone the repo into. So now what you'll see is everything that's in your GitHub repo on Visual Studio Code. So essentially what we're doing here is we are going to make changes to our GitHub repo from Visual Studio Code and push these changes and we'll be able to update our website this way. All right, so let's try putting this into practice. I'll go ahead and make a few changes on my homepage and I'll be sure to hit control S to save that. All right. And now we'll make our way over to the left hand side of Visual Studio and on the third option down called source control, we'll select that. And this is where we'll commit and push our changes to commit the change you made. You'll have to input a commit message. And from here, we'll just hit commit. You'll probably get this error message, but that's okay. We'll hit open Git log under the output section. You'll find two commands that you'll want to run. Don't worry. These commands are purely for metadata purposes. They're essentially just to keep log of who is committing and pushing the changes. So we'll go ahead and copy that command and we'll head over to terminal and run those two commands. 
Now you should be able to commit and push the original change you had made. Looks like we got no error message. That's great. We can even see this change happen live. So if we head over to GitHub and go over to our repo, on the GitHub repo, you may notice something different. Right next to our username, there is a message. That's a small change. This is the message we had made for our commit. There's also a yellow circle, which basically tells us that there are some checks in progress. When we click on this, we can actually see some more detail. Here we can see that the Azure Static Web App is currently building and being deployed. Clicking on details will show us some more information regarding our continuous integration and deployment pipeline. And as you can see, it just finished. So now if we head over to our website, homelab.com, and do a quick refresh, we can see that our changes have been made. So it worked. So that was pretty much the final step, but I do have a little bit of an extra tip here. Let's say you want to see the changes you've made to your website before actually committing and pushing them because, you know, it can take some time to commit and push a big change. There's a very useful Visual Studio Code extension that allows us to see our live changes. Head over to the extensions section on the left hand side and search for live server. It should be by an author by the name of Ritwick. Day. You can go ahead and install that. Now from here is very simple. Now all you have to do is right click index.html and open with live server. What that'll basically do is preview whatever you're working on within your website. So to demonstrate, I'll just go ahead and make a quick change here. Then I'll hit control S to save that change. And now it has appeared on my live server. And to be clear, this change is not on my actual website. This is just on the live server. If we're happy with this change, then we'll go ahead and write a commit message and commit it to our actual website. That concludes the video. If you enjoyed, consider leaving a like and subscribing. Also feel free to leave a comment in the comments section down below. I'll try my best to respond to each and every one of your comments. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video.